So this is an Eastern King Snake, and this is one of the signature species of the Low Country. Its real claim to fame is its ability to kill and eat other snakes, including venomous ones. But as tough as this snake is, it's disappearing throughout much of its range, and people don't know exactly why. We thought you might be interested in some of the research we're doing to protect this vulnerable species. I love this time of year because today we get to work up baby snakes. Now I'm joined by Rachel Wallman and Rachel and I have worked on this king snake project for a long time. And so what we're going to do today is go through these snakes. We're going to process them and get all kinds of essential information, you know, length and weight and things like that. And then eventually we're going to get to let them go. So here's some guys that just hatched. And if you look there and watch this, I'll bet they're all in here. Look at all the <laughs> babies underneath there. So these eggs were laid about two months ago by one of the females that we have in the lab. And it took her probably six or seven hours to lay the whole clutch. Now clutches can be anywhere from about five to 14. But I, I can pick this up and tell this is all empty. So all the snakes have come out of their eggshells and uh, moved out into the vermiculite. So these have been incubated for about 55 or 60 days. And what they did is they made a, a little slit in the eggshell, and then what they do is kind of pip their heads out. And then once they sit there for 24 or 48 hours, they'll crawl right on out, and they're pretty much on their own. Actually, for that matter, while they're in the egg, they're on their own as well. But really cool. But I think we're gonna wait on these until they have a chance to shed, until they're, they're ready to work out. But there's some other ones right here, and these, uh, yeah, these have been hatched for some time and they have all shed. And look at those. They are gorgeous little snakes, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they're really cute. So these are uh, completely ready to be processed. And I don't know exactly how many are in here. There's a little shed skin from, <laughs> from one of them. Uh, anyway, there's no real easy way to do this. This is exciting every time you work up this many snakes. And one of the hardest things is to keep them from crawling out of the bin while you're working up another snake or something like that. But let's get started. All right, so we are going to be on LG 2201. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select one. <laughs> one, one selected. Get that lid for you. <laughs> okay, the first thing I want to do. We need the sex of this. And it looks like this is a male. It's always a little harder than you think it's going to be. <laughs> 12 grams. So 12 grams, and that, that's pretty typical, isn't it? Yeah. 12 grams is a, is a common a weight. Standard these, weight. These guys. So guys, in the past, what, what I would do is I would uh, clip belly scales. It wasn't real reliable. And then I even got to the point where I was drawing pictures in my notebook of the head pattern. And because they have a pretty characteristic head pattern, and then why don't you tell them about what we're doing now? Yeah, so now we're doing photos on them, which I think is a lot easier than trying to do 96 <laughs> hand-drawn drawings of those guys. So we'll do the photos, and each one is super unique. It really looks like a fingerprint on them. Um, I didn't realize how unique they were until we had a whole bunch of them, and you're going through, and you're like, that one's a smiley face, that one's missing a neck band. So it's really, really Yeah, and cool. some of them have really fun ones, like you yeah. said, like the smiley face ones. Yeah. I noticed this one earlier. Look at that little guy. That I mean, is so small. That's that, that. So there's there's great variability in these things. So sometimes you know they hatch out at regular size 12 grams or so. I can't wait to see how light this one is, but it's noticeably shorter and it's going to weigh a heck of a lot less. I imagine it's harder to survive when you're this small. But what are you guessing? Two. No, it's bigger than that. You think I, two? I think it's five or six. I'm gonna go four. I'm gonna increase. Made me change it. Three. three. And we both lost. You were you were really <laughs> close though. Well, only because. Uh, <laughs> so three grams. I mean, and this this is a snake that will weigh a kilogram uh, as an adult. Oh, 
Okay, now for the absolute best part of this, right? We get to release these little guys. Yeah, I'm excited for it. So the reason we're doing this is we want to demonstrate that we can uh, hatch these animals out in the lab and that they survive. And that's really important because we may be able to use this as a technique for conservation eventually. Yeah, so over the past couple of years, we've had four recaptures, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's really hard to find them again. And it's always super exciting when you come running in with a snake for us, an ID from the computer. Well, and the other thing is the recaptures we've gotten, they've been in great shape yeah. too, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, they've grown a bunch and they've, they've looked really good. So that's comforting for sure. The genetics are from here. So mm -hmm. we're, in other words, we're not bringing in animals from Florida or genetics from Florida. They came right here from this county, yeah. so that's important. Yeah. One of the things we're gonna do is make sure that we put these in spots where they can right away hide and get underneath something, because what we don't wanna do is attract a predator. We wanna give them a, a good chance, for sure. Now, there's lots of predators out there that might eat these, things like, you know, great blue herons and egrets and other birds and things like that, and of course, other snakes and things like that as well, but hopefully these guys will get a chance to see them again. So Rachel, I have one more left. I have already <laughs> released all of mine. But we have a whole bunch more to work out back at the lab, don't yeah. we? Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show yeah. and mostly for working on this project for so many years. It's super fun. All right, here goes this guy. Okay, so we're back at one of my study sites several months later, and I'm hoping we might be able to find one of those hatchlings. Now, I've been seeing a particular animal that was up several weeks ago, so I thought what we'd do is go back to that same spot and see if we can find her. Going to sneak up a little bit here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and set my scale up because what I want to do if this snake is here, I want to get some data from it. I hope this is going to be pretty silly if the snake isn't even here, but I think there's a chance that she may be. And there she is right here. Look at her. I'm gonna pick her up and I'm gonna make sure it's the snake I think it is. I have a pretty good idea. Now, the first thing I notice about this snake is it is huge. This animal has grown so much. There's a little bit of a shed skin, but I also wanna just make sure it's the same snake. And sure enough, it is. So I can tell by that V in the neck and then various spots on the head. This is definitely no doubt about it, this is the same snake. And again, it has grown significantly. In fact, the animals, I have some that I kept in captivity that I've been feeding regularly, and they're not nearly this big. It just goes to show. Now, I wanna get a quick weight, see what this snake weighs. Looks like 68 grams. And it looks terrific. Man, there's not a mark on it. It's hard not to wanna to hold this longer, but Man, this is so cool. I guess it's much better to be out in great habitat like this. Obviously, this snake is getting plenty to eat, and it's doing a really good job of conservation of energy. It's saving that, that energy and growing as big as it can with what it's getting. It's such a neat window of what's going on in nature. And it also lets you know that habitat, good quality habitat like this, is just essential for snakes like this little eastern king snake. So we've seen some great animals, some real iconic species of this region. But believe me, we're not even close to done yet. There's an awful lot of signature species that we still want to find. Thanks for joining us on Coastal Kingdom.